Hello and welcome back to Behind the Desk, the podcast all about my time working for a recording studio. And we finally have some work coming in. And things are starting to get back to normal. And there's bookings being booked and sessions being recorded. And not just one type of session either. There's been a variety of different sessions. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. The variety of just different sessions that have been coming into the studio recently and how I've worked on them because there is more to them than just hitting the record button a bunch of times. So before we get started if you like what you hear then consider giving this podcast a like or a heart or whatever it is to show support whether you're on Spotify, YouTube or Facebook. And if you have any questions then leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to try and answer any questions you might have. Now without further ado let's get started. So One of the more ongoing sessions I've been working on is an EP for a synth pop album. I feel like I've mentioned this before, in fact I have, I'm pretty sure I've done an entire episode about this. And what I like about this project is the fact that it's been continuously pushing my skills as a mix engineer and forcing me to work in Logic, which I don't usually work in, but I am getting pretty comfortable with that now, so I am starting to like Logic. And the thing I am seeing most when doing this project is I'm starting to mix up the shortcuts for Logic, the shortcuts for Reaper and the shortcuts for Cubase as well. So that's fun, you know. I have tried setting up shortcuts on Reaper to try and replicate Cubase, but I can't really do the same for the other DAWs at work because I'm not the only one that uses Logic at work or Pro Tools at work. So I can't really change the shortcuts to suit my needs, which is a shame, but what can you do, hey? But like I mentioned before, I've had a lot of time to practice mixing in Logic because of this project. And and I've also been able to talk to the client a lot as well. Because the way I communicate with this client in particular goes a little like this. He gives us a track, me and the other intern do an initial mix of said track. We make it cleaner, sort out the balancing issues and just tidy up and polish the track. Then we have a meeting with the client and see what he wants changing. And this can range from anything, like anything. He has mentioned in the past changing levels of tracks, which is easy enough, adding additional synths and pads to layer up a section, sometimes being really picky with a single word in his vocals that is ever so slightly rushed, and a bunch of other things. Now, that might sound a little like complaining, and sometimes I am, because what he asks for is very nitpicky. But overall, it is a good experience, because then I get to learn how to actually fix a problem. So in the future, the next session I have with a similar problem, I'll know how to fix it. For example, let's go back to the rushed vocal problem. In his latest track, he sang a lie which came out of time with the rest of the track. So I had to learn how to use the time stretch function in Logic to fix it. And because of that, I was able to learn that Cubase also has a similar function. I don't know if Reaper does, but I'm definitely gonna look it up. And this is useful because in the future, when somebody goes a little too fast or a little too short on a word, I'll be able to use the time stretch function in whatever door I'm using. Does that make sense? I feel like it does. What I'm trying to say is there's a lot I've learned from this one album of mixing. It's been pretty fun to work on as well. Another project we have had recently in the studio was three recording sessions with a country singer and the purpose of these sessions was purely to record, nothing else, so that we can send the project off to his producer in America. Is my favourite music country? No, absolutely not. I think a lot of it just sounds the same. And it hasn't really evolved over the decades that it's been around. Because if you hear a country song from the 70s, it sounds very similar to a country song in present day. But did that stop me from enjoying the sessions? No because I actually get along with the singer rather well. And what made this session different compared to the synth pop album, for example, it had a lot more communicating with the client in a very short time frame. It's not like having a professional conversation over several emails and video calls for months and months. You are in the studio for two hours at a time talking to the client directly, reassuring them, making sure you both know what section of the song to come in at, talking about, listening to different takes. And these sessions were less about mixing or recording really, but more on how to communicate to someone in the booth when you are in the control room. 
and I think that is a skill that I've had to develop over the past year or so. Because depending on how well you can talk and get your point across in the studio can determine how smoothly a session can run. I think it is a skill that is completely overlooked when working in a studio, at least not thought about immediately. Because when you think of recording studios, you think you need to have musical knowledge, you need to know how to use the desk, how to mix, how to master, how to use the tech, how to do all the technical things, and you don't think, how can I get a good performance out of my musician? And you don't think how to phrase the fact that the previous take was pretty naff. So yeah, these country sessions I feel helped improve my talking skills, which is completely different to the pop synth album project, because in that, we were kind of just left to our own devices. So it's nice there was some variety going on between these two sessions. And finally, we've had another vocal session come in recently, but the catch to this one is that we had another producer on Skype with us the whole time, and he really wanted to hear how the vocals sounded throughout the track, with good quality audio. That meant we couldn't just rely on Skype to send him audio. So the other intern, Tom, uh, set up this plugin by Audio Movers called Listen To. And what this plugin does is essentially allows you to stream a recording session from one door to another. We just had a free trial of it so we can't use it all the time, but when we did use it, it worked really, really well. So in our session, in our Logic project, we had the transmitter part of the plugin set up, routed the audio from the stereo output and into Listen To, the plugin. And then the producer in America had the receiver part of the plugin. And it worked really well, I think. Very little delay between us and the American producer. And it was also high quality audio as well. I think we used 44.1 kilohertz, 24 bit sample rates. And I think it sounded pretty good, but I can imagine it can handle higher qualities as well, if needed. And once that was set up, the session basically went ahead like any other recording session really, just with the American producer being more in charge, which is fair enough, it is his client after all. Me and Tom were there purely to record and work in the control room. A bit longer than a typical session as well I might add. It actually went on for something like four and a half hours and everything still wasn't done by the end of it, which seems too long for a vocal session in my opinion, because people's voices tend to get tired after an hour and a half, two hours max if they can hack it. Anything over is excessive in my opinion, but it is what it is, it's happened now. But again, it was another fun session, a different kind of session compared to the others, because it focused more on the setup before the session, rather than all focus being during the session, if that makes sense. And in terms of projects and sessions coming in, that's pretty much all we've done in the past few weeks. There has been other stuff relating to the record label we've had to do as well, but that's quite businessy and paperwork filled, and not very interesting for a podcast. But if you do want to hear something like that, then let me know in the comments if you are listening on YouTube, or you can message me at Wellsy Media on Facebook as well. So yeah, that's about it from me today then. It's nice to see the variety of sessions coming in, and I have a feeling there's going to be even more in the near future. I know we've got a dry hire coming up on the weekend, I know there's a recording and mixing session for another EP, and I'm pretty sure we're recording Swahili music at some point as well. So yeah, that should be interesting. But anyway guys, all that's left to say is thank you for listening to today's podcast. I hope you've enjoyed. I've been John and I'll catch you next time.